but yeah, really happy with us. You know, I think that's that's four straight medals, and the two before were fifth place. So we're kind of consistently showing up and mixed, which is awesome. And I have to shout out James, everyone. I saw on Twitter the other day that James is now the tied with Riley Newman for having like the male with the second most mixed medals in the year. So go Jamesy. Okay, we have Anna Bright on the podcast. This is probably the sixth time that we've had Anna on the podcast. Um, Selkirk tells me again and again, please stop, but I'm not going to. They love me low-key. By Selkirk, I meant, you know, the people in the comments, my friends, family, all of them, you know, telling me, just please. But anyways... She's uh got a way of convincing me to get back on this podcast. So that's where we're at right now. Um so thanks for coming on. Uh really appreciate the only reason I don't on this podcast, everyone, is so he talks to me. Because yeah, that's true. Sometimes yeah. he doesn't like doing that. This is a way for Anna to get me to talk to her. Um, and that's why we're doing this this is kind of like a therapy thing but that's what we got so we're gonna get into it guys uh we just played the newport tournament the los cab whatever it is whatever they call it anna got gold with anna lee surprise surprise uh and and i got bronze which was not what we were looking for but it's not bad it's our fourth straight podium which is pretty good we've got a ton of medals this year and um, I had a good time. I, I think we uh, we could have got to the final. We had a tough semi. Georgia and JW are great. And they played well. Georgia played probably the best I've ever seen her play. And uh, it is what it is. Bronze isn't too bad. What are your thoughts on the weekend? Yeah, I, I thought it was a good weekend, obviously, winning gold with Annalie. It's funny. When I win with her, it's, it's like, of course, I'm happy to win. But it's also... Um, when the last, oh my gosh, when the last point is over, it's a pretty non-insignificant just amount of straight up relief, uh, to be honest. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, we we kind of mowed through some very, very good teams on Saturday. We were playing really well, uh, carrying some momentum from Seattle. The final was really spastic. I think there's a lot of history between Callie and Lucy and both, like definitely with, you know, Annalie and playing the water so much in the first half of last year. And I played them so much last year. So it, it was a pretty spastic match all around, but glad we, you know, we pulled it out in three. We had one tight game. But they kind of, they kind of donated to the cause by missing a return when we were up 10 9. Um, then in mix, I was, yeah, I was really happy with our play up until the semifinal. That was my fault, everyone. James played great. And I just, I didn't play so badly that we couldn't win, but I played bad enough that winning was going to be a really uphill battle, but then played great in bronze like a few minutes later. Don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, really happy with us. You know, I think that's, that's four straight medals and the two before were fifth place. So we're kind of consistently showing up in mixed, which is awesome. And I have to shout out James, everyone. I saw on Twitter the other day that James is now the tied with Riley Newman for having like the male with the second most mixed medals in the year. So go Jamesy. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I actually retweeted that. I only, tweet, oh, did you? Oh. I only tweet like once a month now. And when I do, it's like James did something good. That's all I, you know, I see it. I see Josh. But you still tweet something. only once a month. Something probably less. And I see something like, you know, James and Hayden Patrick win one a bunch in a row. I'll retweet it. I, me and Josh Garman are friends. Just be only when he, you know, says something nice on Twitter about me. He's so, so nice. So I feel like he rarely says he never says anything bad about anyone. He only shares good stuff. I think he should share some bad stuff, too. Just give us. Yeah, he's got some stuff, but he's he's a sweetie. Yeah, he is. He's a great guy. He's a nerd and he's but he's definitely a sweetie. Yeah, definitely a nerd. Uh, but what else? Gabe Joseph, he won the singles. That's interesting because Gabe has been a guy who has been pretty much able to ruin anybody's day at any given moment. He's ruined my day before. And singles is filled with guys like Gabe Joseph who can just win pretty much against almost anybody. And you just never really know what's going to happen in men's singles. It's such a cluster of unpredictability. 
And it's so much different from men's doubles or women's doubles, where it's always the top two teams, top three teams, men's singles, anything can happen. So I'm happy for Gabe. He played really well. And uh, although there was some criticism of his outfit in the final from uh, you. So do you care to elaborate on that on that criticism? You know, I like the colorful outfits. I like the patterns. You know, I know Gabe likes to, you know, he's got some earrings. He's going to express himself a bit. And uh, the shirt, I liked the shirt. It was like black with some geometric print on one quarter of the shirt. But then he wore shorts that had a, a similarly colorful geometric print, or most of that, but it was different. It was like totally different. And I'm going to be honest, I like a lot of stuff. I didn't like that one, but uh, he won, you know, happy for him. Seems like a nice guy. I don't know him though, but uh, yeah, the outfit, I, I have to say, I was not about the outfit. I, I would have been fine with either, but together together uh, Gabe, love ya well it's the outfit now though he's got to wear it every time it's outfit he wants. he's a great guy and it's uh it's tough to hear that type of criticism because you know Gabe is uh he's a good guy he doesn't deserve this he really doesn't deserve this at all but uh that's where we're at right now you know you get like this- my private thoughts negative thoughts about other people James is just forcing me to express publicly you didn't have to express those thoughts in the first place, but uh, I just felt the what, making comments about his outfit casually. You don't need to be making, I mean, you know, making comments about other men's outfits. Come on. It's not anyways. <laughs> so let's talk about Tyra. You make a lot of comments about other men's outfits. That's true. That's very true. Tyra got gold in women's singles. She took out Anna Lee which is something that I never thought would happen. Uh, Who knows if it's going to happen again, but it happened. And she got gold. She beat Yana in the final. Um, If you told me that Tyra and Yana would be playing in the finals, I would have asked you which APP, but hey. (laughs) (laughs) It's crazy that they they both played great. I'm just kidding. Um, I watched a, a lot of the women's singles this weekend, and uh, they both played really well. The final was competitive and I'm super happy and super excited for Tyra because she got the bronze and women's and she's going to, she's on the way up. She's definitely on the way up and I'm excited about that. So shout out to her. Um, what are your thoughts? Did you, did you, well, you played against Tyra and Elise in the semis. Um, how did that go? And you could tell us about the quarters too. Oh Yeah. <laughs> The um had a had a good quarter final that might have been a uh, personally embarrassing experience for a friend of mine she, Vivian Glossman actually said it was the what did she say she said it was like the number one most embarrassing thing of her 23 years she said something like that in her own funny way which which was funny uh she was then, uh, sure what she was kidding by the way guys I'm sure like she was just joking I don't know. It wasn't that bad. I feel like it's tough for Viv to get embarrassed. I know it's not number one, but it it was funny. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It wasn't that bad. It was just it, you know we, when Anna and I playing well, we're tough. Um, then in the semi, I played Tyra and Elise, and I was very anxious for this match. I actually kind of I told James I kind of had a feeling sort of women say that like a, like a, we might lose. <laughs> we might lose today. I was worried about. Uh, I have that feeling we were, before every match I play, guys. So. I. Okay. It's a little bit different consequence, um, mm-hmm. and, but uh, um, but yeah, I was worried about. We were supposed to play Lauren and supposed to play Lauren and Yana in our second match, but Viv and Lindsay upset them. Um, but I was nervous about that team, and then uh, either Georgia and Vivian David or um, Tyra and Elise, and it was Tyra and Elise uh, largely, well, partially because Vivian David was sick, which is unfortunate, but. Uh, yeah, I was. I knew Tyra. You know, Tyra just had beaten Anna Lee, and this, so this might be a little bit more emotionally charged or something. And we haven't seen Elise, and Elise is using my paddle. So anyone using my paddle, there's a little bit of a mental Got edge it, yeah. to that. Whatever. Um, and she's. I haven't. We haven't seen her in a while, so you know, maybe she's got new stuff. But we came out. We had some great points, including the one where Elise went over the video board. I hope everyone has seen that. It was insane. Um, and I thought, yeah. Really impressive. I'm really excited to play TOC with her and really happy for her. 
um, in the singles. Really, really glad that she won because after the whole incident with Anna Lee, definitely most of the attention was on Anna Lee's reaction rather than Tyra winning. So by Tyra winning the tournament, I feel like she really got her flowers. So, yeah, uh, that's something we should talk about, too. Um, Tyra beat Anna Lee, and after match point, um, Anna Lee um, sort of like feigned a celebration for Tyra and then, you know, chucked her paddle to Lee and then went off the court. And there was a lot of, I guess there was some negative feedback to it, people defending her. There was a lot of comments on it. Um, I personally think that, it wasn't bad. I mean, she's 16 and for anybody who's competed at a high level at anything at 16, um, especially somebody like Anna Lee who doesn't lose often, it's not easy. And I don't think the reaction was that bad. I think it was just, you know, I mean, I, I personally didn't, I saw it and I thought it was funny. I was like, Oh, that's funny. You know, she's a little, she's, she's pissed. She's mad. She can get mad and that's okay. I, I thought that it was fine, but um what are your thoughts on that uh, that reaction and some of the backlash also? I mean, the reaction was bizarre. I uh, I don't think there's really a much better way to put it. Personally, it was bizarre. Like, you don't know what she's doing. You know, the, the clapping and the celebration as she's kind of running off the court. And I, I don't think it's it, – it is hard to lose uh, always. But when you're a kid – especially, I mean, she's very mature, but like 16 year old tennis prodigies have lost a ton because in tennis, there's a culture of playing up and enough people play tennis that no one is so good that uh, at that age, they don't lose. Like every, you're playing people older than you, like you're losing, you're playing people better than you. Uh, so, you know, she's not used to losing. She had a lot of emotions. Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it was on sports. And like, I saw some people saying that there, that she was like, you know, deliberately doing something to subvert tires. I don't think that was the case at all. I don't know what was going on, but, you know, you know, she seemed very much fine the next two days, which I was glad to see. And uh, I just sent her a text, you know, like, keep your head up. Like, you've got a couple of good days of pickle ahead of you. And she absolutely did. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, you know, I also don't think it's wrong. Like some people are saying on social media platforms, like it's wrong to even share the reaction or to like, uh, you know, say anything like speculate, but I'm like, it's also like, well, she is the face of the sport. It's kind of inevitable. I, you know, you shouldn't attack it yeah. personally, but I don't think it's wrong to talk about it or make jokes because it was crazy. I was, I was honestly just glad that it didn't end up on ESPN for her sake. I was really, really hoping it didn't make it to like ESPN or something. And I'm glad it didn't. I don't think her reaction, well, I think it, I think my take is that her reaction wasn't that crazy or that unsportsmanlike that it deserved any sort of real I mean I didn't have an issue with it but I also don't really have an issue with the people that are roasting her a little I don't think it's you know like if if I did something like if I got pissed after a loss um and people were roasting me I know I'm a little older than Anna Lee, but it's like well if you're number one in the world at pickleball and you're making a ton of money and you're going out there and competing and you're putting yourself out there there is also a price that you are paying. There's something you're signing up for when you do that. And I think it's it's okay. I mean, if she's going to get roasted a little, I mean, she can take it. She's tough, I think. You know, she's played. Yeah, I think she's she's fine. Now we're going to talk about Colin Johns. My favorite topic in all of pickleball, Colin Johns playing his favorite event in all of pickleball, mixed doubles. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, he was... Out. I just I was like, oh, he's gonna say men's, and then he said Nick, so that was good. Yeah, no, he was playing. Nick Nick. On the left. He was on the left this week, not like on the right with Edda. He was on the left. His feet. That might have been the problem because he got hurt. There was a he fell on the ground. Please go back and watch this. It's really funny. It's tough that he got hurt, but I'm sure he's fine, so we can laugh about it. He fell, hurt his foot or something, was on the ground. The ball is like 15 feet in the air. Eric Lang, heavy handed. Eric Lang, who can rip an overhead, decides to, instead of hitting the overhead to the open court, hits the ball, aiming right at Colin Johns's, uh, who knows, midsection, and tags him. Doesn't even apologize, I think. I don't even know. I'm sure he apologized. But uh, I just want you guys to check that out because it was absolutely hilarious. Anyway, Colin, unfortunately, was hurt. massively exaggerating this. No, uh, maybe. Colin Eric did I would have done the same. 
Yeah. So Colin got hurt, and for the rest of the weekend, he was moving at like 90%, which for how much a guy like Colin normally moves is not, not much. much at all. And uh, Ben and Colin lost to j and Dylan in four. That was tough to see because obviously Colin wasn't at his best and that and the Johns is never lose to Dylan and JW and I don't think they will. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that this might have helped JW and Dylan get over the mental hump of beating Ben and Colin or is it just a one off not going to happen again? Mm, it might help them get over. I could see it might help them get over the hump a tiny bit. It helps just like to win. It's kind of like. I don't know. Maybe this makes no sense, but it's like in basketball saying the, the, the ball go in, they say like, it's might you know, they, they see their names they won, but uh, you know, I, I also read something from real clear stats that like Ben was speeding up the ball twice as often. He does it every 22 shots. He was doing it every 11. So this wasn't the normal John's formula and they still have to be stressed that it went four. Um, so I could see it helping them some, but I, I don't think this, in any way will affect the Johns' mentality towards Jadov and Dylan, which is also very important. Yeah, I, I mean, with Ben's dink quality, I don't see them losing to anybody right now. It's just incredible. The, the guy has the dinks, the resets, the soft game on both of the Johns brothers is just I could talk about it for a long time. We're not even going to get into it. It's I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about Colin Johns. Um, but let's, let's, let's talk about somebody who nobody's passionate about. Um, Grant Bond. Okay. <laughs> so Grant Bond, for the people who don't know at home, I'll start it off like this. I am, when I play lefty, I'm, I'm good with my left hand. And I would say that I, because I play lefty often these days, I'm probably a third round to fourth round premier pick female lefty. Um, I think most of the women that have played with me would agree. I'm not a first rounder or second rounder yet, but I think you'd be crazy to pass up on me in the third or the fourth. And this is, this is true. This isn't even a joke. I'm good with my left hand. Um, Probably a high five, five. Wouldn't you say Anna? Yes. Yeah, I would say. James is a very good lefty. Yes. Annoyingly, like in a dink, in a in skinny singles up the line. I don't. I beat him right now, but it's not a blowout at all. And honestly, I bet we'll be reporting back next time I'm on this podcast in like six weeks that you are beating me. Yes. So speaking of people that I'll be beating in six weeks, Grant Bond, pro, arguable, pro <laughs> player. He qualified for singles. And maybe one around in men's qualifier. Okay. So he is, he's, he's on that borderline of like, okay, he's a pro and, but he shows up and he plays the pro tournaments and he's a great guy, by the way, he's actually one of my favorite guys. So I feel bad, like, cause he's actually awesome. Yeah. He is, he's great. And uh, the only issue is I decided to challenge him lefty because I think I'm near his level lefty and we played we decided to do skinny singles match and Matt writes in the room, Ben's in the room. A bunch of people are there and they, they want action on this. They're like, we got to bet on this. Georgia Johnson right away. $10 on James. Thank you. Georgia. I got him. Yeah. And bet. bet on me, all the pros, there's so many different <laughs> pros. You know, we got Pablo Tellez watching Brennan long Dylan. So many people are betting on it. It's a big deal. This skinny singles game, me lefty versus Grant righty. And the first game goes we back and forth. One, me and Annalise, so that this match could begin because, well, the singles did go three, but it was like this had to happen. Yeah, it was a big deal. And uh, the first game happened and it wasn't my best performance. I uh, I lost 11-8. It was competitive, but I wasn't playing my best. And you, benefited, I you did benefit from a freeze at 10. It would have been like 11-5, 11-6. Yeah, yeah it just wasn't good. It wasn't good for me. And he was missing. He was tight. It was bad. It was, it was really bad. Yeah, it took me time. It takes time to get that left hand dialed in. So I looked at Grant and we weren't planning on playing more than one game. And I looked at him and I just didn't see in his eyes that he wanted it. And I looked around and I looked right back at Grant and I said, double or nothing. And I look at Matt Wright and I'm like, another 20. I had my own action on this game. I had 20 with Grant, 20. Who knows? I had a lot of action on it. And 
lo and behold, I fight back. That second game, I start getting my lefty drops under control. I'm dictating the kitchen line. Lefty dink, lefty forehand flip speed up. Bag Grant with the lefty <laughs> counter. I think I bagged Grant twice. Just and he's, I've got him complaining about my white paddle. I've got him complaining about the sun, the wind, the moon, the stars. It's all getting in Grant's head. And I'm just there competing. I'm using my left hand, but I'm fighting my heart out. And I'm making balls. And I'm tough to attack. I'm still moving well. I win the game. I win the game. It was, it was, it was truly epic. I wish, I honestly, it's a shame the grandstand courts weren't recording and we didn't all have mics on. I was going crazy cheering for James. Like, not crazy, but I was super into it. And uh, so many joke about that. And it's like Pablo and Matt are talking about how your drops in like midcourt is better lefty than right. They're joking to me that I need to get you to uh, to 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 start playing lefty. From it, it was Connor Garnett walked by and was watching. Brendan Long walked by. Like tons of people were invested in 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 this game of skinny singles. It was amazing. Like it was beautiful. Yeah, I know it was. It was beautiful for all of us. Grant, oh, I, oh, he was so tight. Grant got tight, and how could he not get tight? He was nervous. It was a no, no, no. Thing like. He Dylan was saying this like he wasn't even ever looking to speed up a ball. It's like your lefty, like your counter on your backhand. He catches the ball like if you can if you can find his right hand or like because there's not no reflex there. And it's like Grant was so conditioned that he had a hands disadvantage against James that he never sped the ball up. It was crazy. It was a mental disadvantage, is what it was. (laughs) And uh, so I won the game and. It was it was a very long game. It was a battle. And I proceeded to tell everyone that I could find that I had just beat Grant on lefty. But it wasn't enough because I had to bring it up on the pod. So now anybody watching the podcast knows that's what happened. Um, and that's all, folks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. See you later. Good.